Hey everybody, it's Mallory from the Self Sewn Wardrobe podcast and live broadcast, and I'm going to talk to you about sewing uh, bread bowls. So uh, what I've done, I've done a couple of lives about this, and I've done a bread bowl, a uh, bread proofing bowl. And so anyway, what you're going to need huh, is some clothesline. Okay, mine has gone crazy after it's come out of the package. This is a quarter inch uh, cotton clothesline, okay, that we're going to use as the base of our bowl and for um, for decorating it. Uh, we might, I'm going to talk to you, I'm going to give you some caveats about decorating your bowl. Um, and then I got my normal, you can see it's the J foot. It's just the all purpose foot that, uh, we will use to make the bread bowl. Uh, and then the other foot I have, which is once again for decorating, it is this double cording foot. I'm going to explain to you this double cording foot at first glance looks like something that you might use to actually construct the bread bowl but it's not actually a good tool. Without further ado, I think I'm gonna turn my camera around, okay? And toward the machine bed and get started that way. Okay, so here's the end of my clothesline, all right? And what I'm gonna do to get started, well, first of all, I'm gonna put the foot on my machine. Ta-da. Okay, um, and so anyway, now to get started with this, one thing that's so important in this process, oh, and I, I have it so where my knee lift uh, is between the legs of my tripod. How cool. So what you want to do is you do not want ever for your foot to be uneven. Okay, I'm trying to show you like worst case scenario. Okay, look. See how that there's a slant to my foot? We want to avoid that at all costs, especially at this time when perhaps your sewing machine repair store is unavailable to you. Okay, so I would really recommend not doing that. So what I'm going to do here, um, I'm going to do this on camera. I might have to do a little off camera because it's at a funny angle. But I'm going to spiral this clothesline around a little bit to make myself just a bit of a platform, okay, for my foot. So that I just, I have a base to start with. This is flat. It's not, you know, we're not, we're not turning it into a bowl yet, okay? We're not, we're not there. All right, so this is flat, and now I'm just going to put it under my foot, and I just want to show you. Uh, I'm raising my foot. You can see I'm not using my other hand because I'm raising my foot using my knee lift, and if you don't know what that is, uh, well, we'll I'll tell you later, and you're going to want one so bad. And so I'm going to do a zigzag, and right now um, I'm going to increase the width to about 4.5, and I'm going to increase my length. Uh, to about a two. And so now I'm just going to sew forward on this. And then I'm going to, I'm pressing my reverse button and I'm going to sew backwards. Why is this so slow? <laughs> uh, the there we go. Now, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's just, it's funny sewing at this angle. Okay. And so I'm going to go forward again and I'm going to go backward again. And I'm going to, oh, and see how I let the back of my foot fall off of there? Really not, d d try not to do that. Keep it on. Okay, and then go back to your center of your little uh, spiral there and pivot your machine. I've got my needle down and I raised my presser foot and now I'm gonna go perpendicular to that line, okay? So I'm just making like a little cross to start off with. This is not the most beautimous way to start off this process, okay? So it's it's a very utilitarian way, all right? It's not it's not the most gorgeous um, way, so I just want you to keep that in mind. For our bread proofing bowl, this will do. And then I can sew in place a couple times, and I'm gonna cut. Okay, the next thing I need to, you to keep in mind is um, as I really uh, put this under there, kind of the quote, wrong way, there is a wrong and a right way to do this. You don't want your bowl to grow this uh, to your right. You want it to grow to your left. So if I have it this way and I keep turning and um, here we go, and I keep turning and adding and turning and adding, my bowl will grow out to the left and that is what I want. If I turned it over and it grew out to the right, well, then the top of my machine, um, you know, up here would get in the way as I went to uh, curve my bowl to make the sides. So uh, ask me why I know that there's a wrong and a right 
way to start sewing your bowl, okay? So that is why. So now I'm going to proceed to do the base. So once again, my zigzag is set at a width of 4.5 and a length of two. You may even, depending on yourself, you may even go a little wider, okay? So I'm gonna sew this a little bit. You know what? I think I'm gonna go to a five. Yeah, why not? Okay, so I'm going to a five width. And you can see what I'm doing is I am zigzagging to join my pieces. And at the beginning here, you have to go kind of slow and you may want to adjust and rotate. All right, so this is gonna let me show you something really important. As you go along and do this project, what you want to do is make sure that where your cord is coming together, where you're kind of butting that cord up, you want to line it up with that center mark on your foot. That's another reason that I chose this foot. Now, if you choose an open toe foot or something else like that, um, that's up to you. But what we want is we want some kind of center marking. And I like this foot because it gives us just all of this platform. An open toe foot, this side wouldn't be supported at all, but it is a little bit because the plastic extends forward. So where are my eyes as I am doing this project? Well, they are on the center marking of the foot. I have in tested and I've made sure that when the cord is butted up against itself and it's centered on the foot, that the zigzag is catching both sides. So I no longer need to be sort of concerned with my needle. And watching your needle is not a good policy while you are sewing. Okay. And the, the beginning is... I, it's not like, I don't want to say the hardest, but it's the slowest going because you have the tightest curves here. I think I may have accidentally chosen like a short piece of clothesline here. Yeah, so we'll get to uh, explore joining another piece of clothesline on. Which you may have to do if you've like opened up a package and you've made a bowl. Um, and you're going to go make another one and you're using, you know, the end of a package. You're not at the beginning. Okay, so I'm going... And you see when your curve gets slower, um, when it gets to be a larger arc, it's easier to just keep it going with your fingers. I'm just going to measure this just so you all can see where I'm at. Actually, I'm almost... Uh, almost to where I want to be. I think I want to be around three and a half. Well, yeah, I think it's almost ready. It's almost time for me to curve. However, I'm in a little bit of a special situation here. Okay, so look, I'm coming to the end here. Now, this is where the fabric wrapping practice, of course, would come in like super duper handy because you could get a seamless look where no one would, no one would even guess, okay, that the the cord had been pieced together. So what I'm gonna do is I butted that up against uh, the edge there, and I'm gonna kinda go as far as I can and keep those lined up. Okay, and then I want, okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna sew, whoop, like, perpen, sort of, and it's not perpendicular because that's a curve. Whoop. <laughs> really? Oh, Selena wants to know how would I finish the cord. I like to loop it back and make a little hanging loop. But what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of butt those up and zigzag over them. It's like I'm darning them together. And I will come back to this, okay? So I just kind of zigzagged over them. Okay, time to tilt, and that is just what we do. We raise this up a little bit in order to create a curved side. And this is where things get fun. 
this is what takes some practice, everybody. Okay, uh, let me show you a little bit. I have like, whoa, lots of clothesline over there. I need to make sure that I keep it untangled. Um, I need to make sure that there's nothing sort of like pulling on my project or anything like that. N you know, no weight hanging off of it. And then I am cr I'm tilting this up as much as I can. Look, my machine, you know, it gets in the way a little bit, of course. And so I'm tilting it as much as I can. And you'll see. So here I'm on like my first little round of tilting. But you're going to see very soon that it starts to go upward um, rather quickly. Also over on the side of my, whoop, on the side of my machine, excuse me, sorry for that. See, I've got this thread cutter here, or you might have something else, like you might have all sorts of stuff back there, okay? Um, you just need to make sure that your, uh, that your little flat bottom there is not getting hung up. So always, you know, be looking at your project path and your thread path. Paula asked if I'm using a Microtex needle. I would say, um, and what I say in the blog post, which will uh, be finished once I get this video footage, wahoo, um, is a size 90 Microtex or denim needle. It really, the clothesline... It's a quarter inch thick. I mean, that is thicker than your average fabric, of course, but it's not super tightly like woven or anything like that. It's it's not like a quarter inch of leather or something like that, or like you're sewing through, you know, eight layers of canvas. Really, the main key here to protecting your machine in these times where we may not have as ready access to our repair person is keeping the foot level. If I have missed anywhere, Okay, you will be able to focus on this hopefully a little more unless you're doing a Facebook Live, which is super fun. So if you want to do that, go ahead. Um, <laughs> if I've missed anywhere, it's so simple. I'm just going to check for those misses. I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to zigzag over them. Oh, do you see how dusty my foot is getting, everybody? Like, just, I cleaned off the foot before this because mom had been sewing on some flannel. Oh, yeah, look at that. So this is just from, like, one bowl. Uh, not, it's not even a bowl, okay? It's a, it's a small tray at this point. Okay, if you want to ever, like, check out your progress or, you know, see how high your bowl is and it's kind of hard to measure, just backstitch and cut, I'm using the automatic thread cutter on my machine, and take it off your machine and check it out. Okay, so like, actually, that is just adorable. Okay, there's the place where I joined. I don't really care that it's like not gorgeous. Um, maybe I'll cover it with uh, decoration or something like that. Uh, maybe not. If you are making this for a loved one, maybe you start with like a new package of clothesline. Okay, so now I'm just gonna go right back to where I was, and I'm gonna backstitch a little bit. At this point, it does get a little easier to cup the bowl. So I want to show you this, this progress here. So look, I've got more space. I've got more, you know, room to maneuver a little bit. Okay. So once again, I'm going to try. I'm going to just backstitch. Raise my presser foot. Oh, check that out. That's bowl. Looking like a bowl. Okay, it's not quite as tall as I need it to be yet. So I just backstitched, I went forward and back to get started again. I also got to take some video of me getting the dough out of the proofing bowl and uh, really showing that it does, it can stick a little bit, but then showing you the bread after it's baked. 
and showing you that it doesn't really matter, that you still get the cool lines and you still get the... Now, I want to talk to you. When you get up here and you're less encumbered by this part of the bowl, you could start to really, like, straighten this up more or whatever. And I think my bowl actually flared a little bit up there, my, my other one that I did. But, yeah, it's looking really nice. I think I'm really almost to the height I want. I don't want to shortchange myself. And my left hand has kind of changed position. It's sort of on the edge of the bowl instead of where I was. I was kind of cradling the bottom before. All right, we're getting to the end of the bowl, everybody. Okay, so I'm going to finish this off. I'm gonna cut some off to make like a little loop. And you don't have to do this. You could cut it off and sort of do what I'm gonna do with the loop. Uh, instead, you just, just stitch the bejesus over it. You could use a little bit of fabric. Um, if you wanted to make this look nicer, you could enclose this in some fabric. But look at that. I just opened that up. I'm just inserting it right there. I just zigzag, zigzag, zigzag. So I'm going on one side of that inserted tail, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go on the other side. Okay, going to stitch in place a couple times. Okay, and boom, boom. Okay, yeah, this is a good size bowl. All right, look at that. Now, what I did with my other bowl is it has loops of clothesline. But what happens here is this is one, two, three layers of clothesline. Tell you what, let's just not chance it. Let's just, if you, if you are going to decorate the inside of your bowl, just do something where you're applying one layer of clothesline. And so I think what I wanna try and do here is a bit of a spiral. Um, and I'll see uh, if I can film that. But this is where I wanna talk to you about. Now, we are going to use our double cording foot. I believe that I'll probably be going on the left. That's what I did last time. Um, and so how I'm going to sew this on is just with a straight stitch, okay? I'm gonna make it a little longer than normal. Uh, so I'm going to choose a straight stitch oriented to the left. I'm going to increase the length to about 3.5, okay? But the reason that this doesn't work so hot when we are zigzagging, okay, is because those zigzag stitches will start to get caught on that groove that is behind the needle, behind where the zigzag gets made. So you see that groove's gonna get in your way. So this actually isn't a great I, a great option for constructing these bowls. I've tried it and my zigzag stitch gets caught. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to just use it for the couching. All right, so here's the deal about this clothesline bowl. Just, um, you can get in here, okay? I, and, and you can like fold it back. So check this out. Like I can, you know, fold this back if I need to or something like that. So uh, I, the, the design I did before was fairly intricate and I just showed it who's boss, okay? But right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this spiral and I'm not gonna bring it into the center here, like into um, the base because I like the spiral that I get from the flower uh, just when I am... Um, like when I put the bread in there, like if this was a an unadorned bread proofing bowl. So I just like that. But I am going to do a little thicker. I'm just going to accent sort of the spiral that I'm getting. So once again, uh, I have my machine on a straight stitch oriented to the left. My cording is in the left groove of that big double cording foot. And my stitch length... Okay, I thought I put it to 3.5 and then it was down to 3, but who knows. Okay, and then I'm going to go. And what this is doing is it is just guiding my cord. Okay, and I'm sort of freehanding this. You could draw like with a graphite pencil, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going a couple of coils away from the center right now and when I get back around you'll see that I'm just gonna kind of space away okay so I'm just gonna show you the bowl is like this and I'm around here I'm just sewing 
get your cord to a place where it's free. Okay, and you're seeing, see this is my previous cord, so you can see how much that's sticking out. So that can like, that can make an impression on the bread as it's proofing and be fun. I'm coming to the end here, I think. Maybe I'll just sort of finish this off with like a parallel to the rest of the bowl. Like that could be a pretty, a pretty way to finish this off. So it's like a sort of like a lip or a ridge on the, on the bowl. All right, and since I'm coming around, oh look, this is all like kind of ending up right here. Don't know if I would have necessarily planned it that way. It's, it's ending up with my uh, loop. I don't know, maybe it's a good thing. It's all in the same place. Okay, so I'm gonna come here and I'm just gonna sew my straight stitch. I'll show you. Oh, that's kind of fun. Look at the inside of that bowl. You see these little frayed edges here? Okay, we don't, we didn't want those. So off with the double cording foot again. On with the all purpose foot. Once again, if your machine is not up to sewing through a lot of layers, don't do this decorative part. I hate to, I hate to say that. It's, you know, it's not the most fun recommendation, but um, I don't want to see your machine in the store, you know, in the repair shop or unusable and unable to go to the repair shop during this time of physical distancing. So once again, I'm just kind of darning over that join. All right. So in place a couple times, my machine has a button to do that. All right, and then I need to do, okay, so that's that's what it looks like. I don't really mind that. And like zooming in on it may not look, you know, super beautiful, but it does not look half bad. Uh, and then I'm going to go back. So once again, I'm just darning sort of this. Is, if you've seen our darning videos, we kind of just, we call it sort of reweaving the fabric with our zigzag stitch. And so that's what I'm doing, just covering up that, you know, frayed edge of the clothesline. And since I used a thread that coordinates, okay, so like, see how my spiral got like a little off there? If I'd drawn it on, it would have been more precise. But for our purposes, for just creating this sort of, you know, fun, uh, pattern that will sort of show up on your bread, I think it, it works really nicely. Uh, if you do have to put this in, my sourdough um, recipe calls for you to do the final proofing in the refrigerator in this, okay? I put it on a plate or a cutting board, okay? I don't, it, like, when it gets full of wet dough, it can get a little, you know, it's not, uh, it's not like ceramic or wood or anything like that. So I do put the base onto a cutting board or something, and I flour the bejesus out of this bowl. It doesn't really stick to this part. It does. If you just make a normal one with no decorations, you'll probably have no problem, but it's stuck to my decorations a little bit. However, it still made a really beautiful imprint um, and impression on the bread loaf. So I was very like surprised, uh, delighted encouraged by that because for a second I was a little upset. I just would like to give this disclaimer nowadays. I hope that I can inspire you and delight you. No pressure. This video will be here. Maybe you're not really feeling it today. I kind of wasn't feeling it today a lot either. All right, uh, so I'll see you next week. Enjoy sewing out loud today. Uh, it is a fun episode about couching and so long and so happy.